Well, I said it before, knowledge is power. And that power operates through human system via, well, first the nervous system has to be tuned like a radio, and then that power, the, that nervous system has the capacity to tune itself to that power, and that power passes through the nervous system, right? And some people's function is to become a container for that power, a receptacle. So you're starting to receive it, literally. But that, that knowledge may not be accessible yet. It may not, it's, let's say it's a new frequency. It's not there yet. Everything works like that. Once upon a time, there was no rock and roll. Rock and roll is a power. It's, nobody can argue. It comes from somewhere. Call it an entity, a state of mind, a deity, a lower div, a devil. I don't, it doesn't matter. It comes from a form of principality, something that is beyond our physical realm. The mind, from the mind's world, yeah? For some reason, which we can discuss at another point in time, is a person that's tuning himself or herself, himself, to the frequency, yeah? And then that person starts to receive that, and something passes through them, a shakti, a power, and it starts to tune their nervous system. Literally, it's tuning their nervous system. It's like that power is like wind. Or if you want another analogy, let's say your nervous system is like a chord of a guitar and somebody's strumming your, the string. So it's starting to vibrate at a different frequency than it was before. Now, depending what your art form is, let's say that we're in the music, so the person starts to vibrate at the frequency. Well, what's, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to take his guitar and he's going to play the frequency he's on. So he's going to make the sound of the power passing in him, if he's good. Now, at first, he's going to be like, I don't know how to make the sound, because this is a new sound. We used to play guitar this way for, let's say, this kind of sound, and now this is another kind of movement, and I don't know how to do it, because my hands aren't moving fast enough, and this is a new way of strumming the, the, the chord, right? So then he's kind of being, like, recoded, if he's receptive and he's the right um, channel. So let's say Elvis Presley, right? Just an example. And then he's going to spend some time learning to play the guitar, replay the guitar. But he's not really. He's learning how to ground the sound. How am I going to make the sound? Because now it's vibrating through me. It reaches a certain place, but it doesn't exteriorize itself because I, I'm not able to do that. But I can feel it. My whole being's vibrating. So now he has to learn how to move his hands, move his body, Right? And then the showman starts to come, so it becomes like showcased and the guitar and the hip movement, which has become just, this is just kind of like exaggeration, but first he has to get the sound. But what is he doing? He's just expressing the vibration passing through him via his art form, which is, let's say, the guitar. So it's the same with everything else. So let's say it's a medical field. So that power is coming through you, it's coming through that knowledge, and that urgency of feeling that this needs to be shared horizontally. So first you have to come up with a, the theory of it. So it's a, it's, a, it's a mind, right? So how does it think? Even if you want to skip that, you can technically. It's like, well, now I have to tune. So it's, I'm, I have, my body has to become tuned, body-mind, right? Has to become tuned to that frequency, just like we did with Elvis Presley just a minute before. It's not just the sound that's coming down. Elvis Presley is becoming that frequency. And if you listen, if you study these cats, which I have, they'll tell you these things. At some point in, towards the end of his life, Elvis Presley said, literally, I am a god. He's clearly not saying, I am God, the capital G, the master of the whole entire creation. But he's on drugs and everything is confused and all of, it, all of it's blended to one. But it's not, he's lying. He's connected to a power. He's become that power. He thinks that power is supreme. It may be to a certain degree, but it's certainly not the absolute creation. It's a demon, whatever it is. It's a power. He doesn't understand the differences. And he's become that. His life has become the result of that. His thinking process, the way he fucks, the way he eats, the way he... Everything, he's, there is no more Elvis Presley. All there is left is that frequency. But it had to transform his biology, his hormonal system, his way of speaking, moving, dancing, thinking, fucking, reproducing, eating, every aspect of it transform according to that frequency. Well, that's why I say the human body, the nervous system is, a, we can say, a form of antenna. It receives something, but it's not just an antenna. It's much more than that. 
it can transform a frequency into an action. Because your radio doesn't do action. Yeah, it does, it makes a sound, but that's the end of that. So in, in the healing arts, for example, if we use that example, it's no different. So when you study, for example, the history of Ayurveda, okay, the beautiful thing about the Indian tradition, or if we can call it like this, is that they have their stories that go back thousands of years ago and, and everything that they come up with is always connected with deity because everything in the Vedic system is connected to the, the central... The, if there's a tree, the whole Vedic system is an entire tree, it always comes to the root. So if you study the history, so when you study Ayurveda, it'll take you... They'll, maybe it'll be a page or two because they don't have... You don't need to know this stuff. But they'll always hint towards it. And I'm curious, so of course I'll look into this. Well, where does that come from? And like I told you, they have a deity, Dhanvantri, right? So Dhan, what is Dhanvantri? Well, where, who is Dhanvantri? Where did he come from? So there's the mythological story of the god of Ayurveda and how he came. And of course, all of this originates from the three basic deities from Hinduism, which is not really called Hinduism, and how he came about. And then the story of how the knowledge of Ayurveda came to be. So first of all, this is a story, this is not my story, that's their story. I'm just simplifying it, right? There was a need. So the people, that means the sheep living on earth at the, at the level of ground zero, were having a problem. So they want to see, I'm just simplifying the story. It's, I have to, would have to think about it deeply to remember it precisely, but you'll get the gif of it. And so the people are having a problem and then the priests are there and say, we have a problem. So then they go see a priest higher up in the mountain and say, we have a problem, what do we do? And then they go see a priest higher up in the mountain, which is a metaphor for going up towards the knowledge. And at some point they have and sit down and have a council. Where all the head priests, the Brahmins, all the people who have access to knowledge, they sit down, they have a conversation until, etc., etc. All of this until the deity, depending on the version of the story, comes and presents them and gives them the knowledge. So in the Quran, how was it? Muhammad was uh, hanging out in, in, in his cave. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Gabriel, the angel Gabri Gabriel came to see him and says, write, or recite, right? Well, well, because this is Muhammad. I don't want to disrespect Muhammad, but this is part, this is why it's interesting in the Quran, because Muhammad is just Muhammad, he's not special. And then he became special because he was quote unquote enlightened by the angel or the archangel. So you can look at it in different ways, but when you understand transmission and transmission of power, understanding the nervous system, you understand the mind, you understand aspects of the mind, it's, then you start, okay, I start to understand. And this phenomenon is not limited to Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's not, it's not limited to the Hindus. This is happening all the time. Like I just gave you an example about rock and roll or anything. Anything is always the same, way, the same thing. So the question is, what is using you or what is being channeled by you? Which is a huge question, let's not get into this right now, but that's, that's the idea. So the same goes for a so-called medical, medical system or a power and knowledge of healing, right? It, it, and then it tunes you to that. And then the first thing, in my case, for example, it's like, I have to fix myself. Because that, the power that is operating through me, via the lineage and the connection and transmission I've received is not able to express itself through me because I'm retarded. Everything in me is fucking broken. Right? So here I go now looking for solutions to quote-unquote fix myself or heal myself and all the things that I'm finding are limited. It's like, you, how are you supposed to tune me? Like, let's say, uh, I have an, an excellent example but it's limited. You'll, you'll understand. Let's say you have a classical guitar. Right? It's a very powerful instrument, you can make a lot of things. But let's say that the, ne the ne next level of sound that you're coming is like Iron Maiden kind of shit. You can't play Iron Maiden with a classical guitar. Kind of, kind of sort of, but you can't. It doesn't have the... <clears throat> doesn't have that. Doesn't, it doesn't have that... Like, like, <clears throat> that <clears throat> you understand what I mean? So it's the same. So I, I was receiving and I was looking for help. And I'm like, but whatever you're giving me is like, it's not strong enough. So that was part of my learning. So I had to take some of that, understand the principles, and tune myself, and then I would receive the insights on how to proceed from that point on. And as I would unlock those certain gates or those certain doors so that the energy would flow more effortlessly through my system and I could become a better conduit of that knowing, then at some point I got to a place where I'm like, okay, now, quote unquote, a system has arrived. I didn't invent a system. The system is inherent in the knowledge. 
It's not even a system, but it's systemized. There's a method, sort of. Right? I didn't invent fuck all. It's, it's inherent in the knowledge, but now it's applicable. It's like the knowledge came and that quote-unquote system is, it was ex, is extracted from the knowledge to, to help a person such as myself with the limitations that I have. If, it, if the knowledge didn't encounter such a fool, it would need to extract from it a system or that system or at that level. Do you see what I mean? So it adapts itself to the times. So now I'm receiving that guidance and at some point through uh, my work, it's, there's a formulation that comes because you eventually do it so many times you start to understand as a pattern, right? It's not so hard to see, but when you're confused, it could be. And eventually, uh, people start to come at, come towards you because they're interested in what you're doing, what you're discovering, what you're learning. Maybe they're just interested in what you have to say or your insights. Some people feel more drawn to it and want to learn. And eventually, you find yourself playing guitar for them, meaning sharing the system, which is not really a system, right? And they start to apply it. And then you start to see, oh, this is the same thing is happening to them. It's becoming, a, it's a science now. This is systematic. I can predict what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, why it's happening, and what to do when it does, how to adjust it, how to facilitate it. Now, of course, through the process, fucking shit happens. Right? Your amp blows up. Strings pop. Something happens. That's part of, that's part of life. This is not uh, smooth sailing. Shit happens, really, sometimes, badly. But, you know, you live to tell the story. Uh, all this to say, this is, uh, this is the process. But when we're talking about, let's say, a thing like uh, traditional Chinese medicine or some specific uh, shamanic traditions in Africa, some of this stuff has been there for, for a long time. So they're already, the rituals are already there, the codes of conduct. What's that mask? When you go to Africa, they got their mask. Where that mask coming from, right? What's that face? Le garrot. Who's that? Right? So it's, this is a, they'll say it is an entity or is a deity. They don't necessarily understand. But when you start to dive deeper into the understanding of esoterica and how powers are grounded through different people and serve a function over a certain amounts of time, then you start to discover those things. And all, this, all the pieces start to click. It's, it's always the same at different levels. So in those systems that are a little more established, well, there's already a code of conduct, a hierarchy. It's already been there for a couple of thousands of years, like Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, right? So who are you, for example, myself or some other person to go? You can't, like, you, it's, it's like settled. So you are obviously, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? When you go there and you're questioning and you have these questions, you're a heretic. How could dare you? Like, it's, uh, yeah, okay. Because, because they, they're, they're, their shit is established. Who the fuck is you to say anything? And I understand their point of view. But anyways, so... so and, but they have their hierarchies and it's been going like this for thousands of years. And then they have their titles because they understand there's different levels of power and establishment of power and different levels of practitioners and this one has that name and that one that, no, 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 and you're that one haha <laughs> right so anyway so when it's a when it, when it's newer none of that is there nobody recognizes it either they can recognize something they can feel it obviously something's particular with this kid but uh, something's off with him yeah maybe something's off yeah yeah or was but that's not just it it's also no i'm looking at you and i'm like inadvertently trying to destroy your system, not because I'm mean, but because I'm looking for something more profound and your system has blocked and stopped going more profoundly and I'm at the wrong place looking for the, wrong th the right thing at the wrong place, so now we have an issue. So that's why I said over the years I had to learn diplomacy and I really I had to pay the price very severely for doing, um, for doing undis undiplomatic acts such as being like Paris and stealing I don't know, I forgot his name, the other, Helen, Helen from, I don't know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> bad move. But uh, yeah, anyways, I learned my lesson and, and then I understood, okay, there's all these powers, this is also Kali Yuga, so this is the time where all those powers are there, and these powers are to be respected, and, and, and when I'm, I'm not in that situation anymore, but I spent a long time in that zone, traveling from 
nation to nation, tribe to tribe, learning their systems. And eventually I started to understand, okay, so the gift I give is questions to help the lead teachers refine their understanding, but it's not to shake their foundations. And some are so established, no, no moron like me, especially at that stage, could shake their foundation or do they care for. But sometimes it's weaker. Well, you you got to test yourself. It's like, let, let's see what I can do. <clears throat> ha! I got gotcha. you. Anyways, 